This is where it began. This is where the fuse was lighted. It began with the arrest by white officers of the California Highway Patrol of two young Negroes, one on a charge of drunk driving, the other his brother, his passenger. Their mother, who lives nearby, came to the scene. There was an argument. There was a scuffle. By then, a crowd of several hundred Negroes had gathered, and the story of police brutality quickly spread through the community. Up the street, a block or so in that direction, a church where Negro leaders pleaded for peace and were rejected. Down that way, the busy intersection where cars were overturned and burned, where a television technician was pulled from his wagon and almost beaten to death. It was the most widespread, most destructive racial violence in American history. The burning and looting, the shooting and beating went on for nearly a week. 34 persons were killed, all but five of them Negroes. Police Chief Parker have described Los Angeles Negro rioters as monkeys in a zoo, and Negro leaders have more than once called for his removal. In creating the situation, where was the failure? On the part of the city, the county, the schools? This, uh, I think, is one of the difficulties in meeting this, is that we're trying to find a failure other than the people themselves. And this is a very dangerous move because it, it serves to sort of sanctify their acts. Every grievance that was had by the people who started this thing, there has been nothing done to solve it. The only thing that was done was that massive forces were brought in to suppress the actual overt action. How has it affected you? It's getting tired of being pushed around by you white people, that's all. How pushed around? How badly? Just stopping us on the street, kicking in the doors, taking down the police station, and kicking your teeth in. Well, they're stopping people on the street now. Oh, yeah. They weren't stopping well, people about on the street now. Oh, they've been done a long time before now. During this entire incident, we've heard constant references to respect for law and order. And more particularly, what they mean is respect for law enforcement. Now, to really understand the problems of these people, you'd have to understand what law enforcement has meant to them for a hundred years. We're talking about the white man's law enforcement that's responsible for many of their parents being chased out of the South on one pretext or another. Under those conditions, you can understand that the people aren't going to be reverent about law enforcement and the men who enforce the law. What would make it better? What would make all the rioting stop? I don't think it ever stop, really. Never? I mean, it may not be like this, but it'll never stop. I don't think. The McCone Commission sought to answer questions about Watts. Can it happen again? So serious and explosive is the situation, says the Commission, that unless it is checked, the August riots may be only a curtain raiser to what could blow up one day in the future. What shall it avail our nation if we can place a man on the moon but cannot cure the sickness in our cities? This is Bill Stout for CBS Reports in Los Angeles. Good night. Out of the ashes of this community, I think that is an opportunity to build a better society in terms of economic security, better housing conditions, better schools, and to deal with the police problem to make Los Angeles a model city for the nation. Thomas Bradley was sworn in today as mayor of Los Angeles, the largest city in this country ever to have a black mayor. Bradley is a former policeman and the son of a Texas sharecropper. Tonight is not just a victory for Tom Bradley, but a victory for progress, a victory for our children. Thank you very much.
Bill Gates had spent 28 years working his way through the ranks to the top job. He had been Chief Parker's driver and bodyguard, his heir apparent. I'm going to put my stamp on this organization. This will be a Daryl Gates department. <laughs> Blacks and liberals have become intensely critical of what they charge is excessive use of force by the Los Angeles Police Department. Daryl Gates is causing the kind of polarization that is dangerous. Many Americans think of Hollywood when they think of Los Angeles, but Los Angeles is also the port of entry for America's new immigrants from Asia and from Latin America. Of the United States of America. In the last 15 years, more than 2 million immigrants from around the world have poured into this city. Many of the city's new small businesses are the American dream of the foreign born. Our city is a stunning ethnic and cultural mosaic. We have forged a sense of identity, of common concern and destiny. In the late Dr. Martin Luther King's words, I'm honored to stand here today and look out upon faces of many different colors, intermingled like the waters of a river. And yet I see only one face, the face of the future. Thank you. to announce that at midnight tonight, all United States and coalition forces will suspend offensive combat operations. This is not a time of euphoria, certainly not a time to gloat, but it is a time of pride, pride in our troops, pride in our nation, and the people whose strength and resolve made victory quick, decisive, and just. Uh, this latest Gallup poll shows people in the United States feeling positive about their country and their president following the Allied victory in the Gulf. 66 percent of those Friday, L.A. residents will have to drink, shower, and consume 10 percent less water. Mayor Bradley signed the water conservation measure today. Can't find you. The economy looks none too good. In fact, uh, they keep saying that the recession is the only thing pulling us out of inflation. 57 degrees. Fullerton, cloudy at 61. Long Beach, probably cloudy at 60. And Lancaster, partly cloudy, 65 degrees. Southbound on uh, Pax at about uh, 50 miles an hour. Has uh, appears to be three male blacks in the vehicle. It's a white uh, Hyundai, I believe. 623 was southbound on the foothill from Van Nuys. Vehicle stopped the light and still yield to the uh, police. 623, we're uh, following the units. We're at Fort Van Nuys northbound. You guys got it? Correct, you Yeah, I got it. An unusual twist in a case of alleged race-based police brutality in Los Angeles. Neither the police nor the suspect knew that a home video camera had captured the scene. It began as a high-speed chase and ended early Sunday morning with the motorist, a black male, being brutally beaten and kicked. The victim was struck as many as 56 times and suffered several broken bones. 56 
times. That's what the American public saw on videotape. George Holliday lives across the street. He had his video camera out, and he recorded what happened as the suspect was being arrested. Got my camera sort of ready and looked across the street, and that's when I saw that the accident was going on. The suspect identified as Rodney Glenn King. King, who is married and has two stepchildren, was on parole after serving time for armed robbery. His wife says that's no excuse for what happened. I mean, it was a traffic violation. How come they just couldn't arrest him and give him some kind of fine or something? Why'd they have to beat the mess out of him like that? Doctors said that he suffered a concussion. One of his eye sockets was pulverized. His cheekbone was so pushed in from the blows to his face that it would require reconstructive surgery. From what I've seen, none of the prisoners of war from American forces taken by Saddam Hussein came back beaten that badly. Los Angeles police say the incident was not racially motivated, but the black community is not buying that. About 300 members of the NAACP marched on police headquarters today. This is an aberration. This is something that should never have happened. We had in place all of the procedures that would keep it from happening. Those procedures fell down because of human error. The ACLU said it receives about 55 calls a week from people alleging police brutality. The incident early Sunday morning is not an isolated incident. The difference this time is that we have the proof. any idea at all how many times you were hit by a club what do you remember about that aspect several of it? times several times and then stomped and kicked pick up your this is something mm -hmm. see, see that what is that from that's from um, uh, some kind of device that they use they um, shocked me they got a big kick out of that. What makes you say they got a kick out of it? Because of how long they left it in me. You know, it was like they had a little toy and they wanted to see how it worked. What kinds of things did you hear from the officers? Did you hear any kind of slurs at all? What do you mean, what slurs? Were there any kind of racial comments made at all? Oh, racial? No. I didn't know. I didn't hear any. You can cut this from the tape if you want. But Rod's family has uh, made it very clear that they're not looking to turn this into a uh, racial crusade. Mr. King doesn't want to make, uh, make it out as though they did this just because he was a black man. That may have been incidental to it, and there may be personal motives that these officers had that we don't know about yet. But at the present time, it doesn't seem like that. As you know, the district attorney's office has been conducting an investigation into the beating of Rodney King, and I am announcing today that we have obtained indictments against four Los Angeles police officers for their role in the beating of Mr. King. LAPD officer Lawrence Powell, Timothy Wind, Theodore Brasino, and Sergeant Stacy Kuhn have been indicted for assault with a deadly weapon and for excessive use of force under color of authority. Officer Powell and Wynn and Sergeant Kuhn are further charged with inflicting great bodily injury in the brutal attack that has now been witnessed by millions of people. Under California law, these are felonies punishable by up to seven years in state prison. Sergeant Kuhn and Officer Powell have also been indicted for filing false reports. All four officers surrendered this morning to the district attorney's office. They have been arrested, fingerprinted, and photographed. Thank you very much. This is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Sitting in tonight in Washington, Ted Koppel.
Good evening. The evidence is new, it's dramatic, and it's devastating to those Los Angeles police officers involved in the March 3rd beating of that black motorist. One of the two officers who wielded batons that evening relayed a message after the arrest to another car, saying, quote, sounds almost as exciting as our last call. It was right out of Gorillas in the Mist. One policeman involved in the beating said, quote, I haven't beaten anyone this bad in a long time. Another joked later, saying, I'm sure the lizard didn't deserve it. Mayor Tom Bradley said the transcript raises more questions about police command. I think it has been devastating to the image of this city and especially to our police department. It's very apparent that some, not all, but some of those officers are clearly out of control and they have to ultimately be willing to take a good hard look at the leadership of the department. Mr. President, all of us, I think, have been uh, stunned by what has happened. And uh, I can't imagine that the chief or anybody else in the city would condone the kind of uh, conversation that took place both electronically and by voice uh, in that Foothill Division that night. Blacks are not animals. They're not lizards. They're not apes. They're not gorillas any more than any of us are. They're human beings. The first way to open the door to brutalizing people in any, any place is to cheapen their worth as human beings. And when I read the transcripts of the conversation, I was appalled. But the ability to freely converse in racist terminology suggests a level of tolerance for that kind of discussion that, uh, that is unacceptable by any standard of decency. Well, first of all, it's, uh, this is a department that this council has supported over and over again. This is a police department that has supported you, each of you. And I just tell you this, if you don't speak out on behalf of the men and women of the Los Angeles Police Department that have served the people of this city well, if you don't do that at this crucial moment in our history, then I'm going to tell you you're going to have a police department that is not going to be the kind of department that you want, the kind of department that people deserve. Mr. Wu. Thank you. Uh, I want to know, did you mean that as a threat? In other words, that if, if, if I or other members of the council are going to be criticizing you or the department, are you saying that you will, will withhold support of these services to fight crime in our districts? That is the most insulting thing I have heard on this council floor in all the time I've been here. And I've been here a lot longer than you've been alive. Absolutely not. This is a professional organization. What do you think we are? He shoved me up against the wall and started to strangle me. I could not breathe. Then he tried to kick me in the testicles. He threw me aside and said, get the out of here now. That's that is the LAPD. We found one case where a dog attacked and bit the chest of a 16-year-old girl. The dogs are quite large and aggressive. They will rip away flesh and muscle. They will tear out blood vessels, and they will sometimes break bones. The police send our kids completely conflicting messages. They're in our schools every single day, and yet our kids see them on TV beating a man like a dog. The police are trained to approach black men as criminals first and citizens second. But before you leave South Central, you need to understand that verbal abuse happens here every day and every night. Get out of the car, nigger. Assume the position, nigger. Sit on the curb, nigger. Right face down on the ground, nigger. We're saying this is what we're confronted with. And when we speak out, the first thing they say is, why are they getting so restless? Why should not we get restless? People are talking about taking this to the streets. And we ain't talking about just marching.
another widely publicized incident captured on videotape in Los Angeles. This grainy security camera videotape graphically depicts the last few moments of 15-year-old Latasha Harlan's life. Store owner Soon Ja Du thought 15-year-old Latasha Harlan's was going to steal some orange juice. She had the money in her hand. You can see the money in the videotape. And uh, the suspect grabbed the backpack, and there became a, a physical altercation over the backpack. And uh, as our victim uh, turned to walk away from the scene, the suspect uh, raised a weapon and shot the victim in the back of the head. Latasha was an A student, honor roll student. She got money every week for her allowance, so she did not have to steal orange juice. The store clerk, a Korean woman, is now in jail. The black community is outraged over the killing. The NAACP is demanding the clerk be tried for murder. Stop killing our children! We want justice! The case has become a symbol of tensions between two large groups in this ethnically diverse city. African Americans and the Koreans who become successful merchants in many of the poorest black neighborhoods. As many as 300,000 Koreans live in Los Angeles, many of them in an area known as Koreatown. Some blacks see the Koreans as a merchant class that takes advantage of the black community. Why don't you open a market that we can use for our family? I go back to Korea. We are deeply concerned that this incident may be detrimental to the positive efforts between the two communities. In order to strengthen our bonds, we will actively join with the African-American community to develop measures to prevent further tragedy. It is now a time for healing. It is not a time for rhetoric, which serves no purpose other than to fuel the fire. It's like throwing gasoline on a fire that's already burning. It is my opinion that Mrs. Dew is not a danger to the community and that she is not going to reoffend. I know a criminal when I see one. I know a person who presents a danger to the community when I see one. When I don't, I treat that person as something other than that. She got away with murder. I damn sure hope so, that there would be all the hell in the black community. I hope community somebody would care. Would stand up and see this insanity child. for exactly what it is. Black people once Walk again away. being unjustly treated and by this. Stay on the street. Since we don't pick cotton anymore and cut sugar cane, we, our, well, our lives is not, not worth anything. I mean, you can have a black person killed or with a video with eyewitnesses, and this is what you'll get. A judge who's probably never been down here, a judge who probably knows very little about this community, a judge decided that the life was not valuable enough. Latasha was killed, our family was killed. Yeah. Racism is not the Korean killing her. Racism is a court system that allows her to kill her. We have to show Los Angeles that we are resilient and we 
we are committed to the salvation of our people. And we are prepared to be civilly disobedient. Judge Bernard Cammons caught observers by surprise when he reversed himself and announced that he would grant a change of venue in the trial of the four police officers charged in connection with the beating of motorist Rodney King. The change of venue motion is greatly entwined with whether we can get jurors, and I'm very concerned whether we can get jurors who are untainted. Other high-profile cases, such as those of Charles Manson, and the Robert Kennedy assassin Sirhan Sirhan were not transferred out of Los Angeles despite high publicity. But defense attorneys say this case is different. Everyone has opinion on the um, guilt or innocence of these defendants, and that's why it will be very difficult to get a fair trial here. To move the trial away from the swarming controversy in the LA media, the venue was changed to the Simi Valley, a mostly white suburb of Los Angeles where many police officers live. Simi Valley is a town of 100,000 people just 35 miles north of Los Angeles. Simi Valley residents are 88% white. Just 1.5% of the people who live here are black. Thinking about right now before you go and start banging up my car, I'm going to have another run of King incident. Waited a long time. Finally get it going, a good feeling? Yes. Did you say anything to uh, Mr. King? Yes. What did you say to him? I yelled at him to lay down on the ground, get down on the ground, did a series of those commands. A series? Yes. You repeated it? Right. And uh, tell the jury what happened next. I, I continued to hit him and then knocked him to the ground, yelled at him to stay on the ground, and he repeated the motion again, getting up again. I was completely in fear for my life, scared to death that if this guy got back up, he was going to take my gun away from me or there was going to be a shooting. And I was doing everything I could to keep him down on the ground. At any time during this evening, did it go through your mind that this was not a human being that you were beating? No. Um, he wasn't an animal, was he? No, sir, just he acting like one. He was just acting like one? Yes, sir. Was he acting like a gorilla? No, sir. Now, this call that involved these African Americans, was it in a jungle? In a what? A jungle. No. Was it at the zoo? No. Were there any gorillas around? I didn't see any. Sir, what are you watching during all this? What are you thinking when you're focusing on that? I'm thinking that uh, Mr. King has been subjected to uh, an enormous amount of... Uh, a pain, and he's uh, not, it's almost as if his body is anesthetized to the pain. What were you thinking now? 
I was thinking that I have exhausted all of uh, the use of force that I have, short of deadly force at this time. I'm thinking at this time I'm either going to have to use uh, a chokehold or my weapon. And why didn't you want to use a chokehold, sir? Because uh, in Los Angeles, the chokehold uh, is associated with death of blacks. How do you view looking at this videotape, sir? It's violent and it's brutal. Was this anything that you enjoyed? No. Why was it done? It's done to control uh, an aggressive combative suspect, and sometimes police work is brutal. That's just a fact of life. Every day, regular folks from the public file in to watch the trial. And you can, too, if you can beat the rush. Actually, you have a pretty good chance. Um, we have 17 seats allocated for the um, public. However, the other seats that we have reserved, if people don't show up for those seats, then we immediately open them up to the public. If you want to come here, though, here's a little advice. They should dress appropriately for court, of course. Um, nothing that says anything about the trial itself or any type of racial slurs, um, anything that might be misconstrued by anyone. Well, anyway, the court order covers that. You have another shirt in the car. Stopping the video at 351.02. Have you seen Mr. King swing at anyone? No, I haven't. Have you seen him punch at anyone? No, I haven't. Is it your testimony then at any point after 342.20, any baton blow received by Mr. King is unreasonable and unnecessary? Yes, sir, it is. Has Sergeant Kuhn not been there to control that situation? As ugly as it looks, Rodney King wouldn't have been home now. And maybe Sergeant Kuhn would have had to go tell some officer's family why they didn't come home. You've got this man down. He's not doing anything. He's not trying to escape. He's not trying to resist. When you reach that point on that tape where you say, enough is enough, that's when unreasonable force starts. Our whole system of justice is based on the belief that if we get 12 people from the community to fairly and dispassionately decide this issue, devoid of prejudice and bias, then the truth will come out. Justice will be done. Think ahead and make a decision now about which you will be able to say years from now, I was true to my oath, I was true to the law, I was true to myself. package for? That's for the officers? Yes, sir. The defendants? You support those guys? You better believe it. Why? Those guys are heathen. Yeah. Those guys are animalistic heathen. Yeah, they're, they're holding the jungle back, Tiger. Come back. Jungle? No. Yes, sir. I think the defendants are jungle people, okay? For you to support those defendants is another is an indication of your humanity, you your immorality. A, you got a constitutional right of poor judgment, and you're exercising no, 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 it no, no, right no. now. You have a constitutional right of just inconspicuous inhumanities. Oh, blow it. Yeah, right. That's ridiculous for you to do that. Yeah. Keep your mouth shut. I didn't ask you down. I have thing. a constitutional right to freedom of speech, brother. Yeah. Well, aim it somewhere else. Okay. That's disgusting. Yeah. Gentlemen, 
Good morning, Sergeant. How'd your ball game and barbecue go yesterday? Well, the barbecue was great. Looks like you're dressed for it today. I got my clothes in the car. <laughs> Can you just tell us what it's like the last few days for you? It's been hard, but uh, I'll, I'll make it. I'll make it. The waiting's got to be extremely tough, though. Sure. Just out of curiosity, do you make conscious decisions to talk to us and tell your side of it? No, not really. It's just... Uh, hey, get it down, David. I have nothing to hide, really. You what should. Better get into court on me. What do you think of the donuts? Sir? I don't know. With the donuts yet, I haven't opened it yet. <laughs> and you're not a hero, buddy. You're a heathen. Why don't you slow down? Good luck, Larry. We're line. behind you. Go for it, guy. Excuse me, Mr. Wynn. How is it waiting right now? Waiting? Yeah. No, I mean for the verdict. How do you feel about it? It's got to be really tough. So let's go to Brian live now at the courthouse in Simi Valley. Well, Pat, everybody is in a state of nervous, uh, uh, state of nervousness, just waiting for this decision to come down. But right now, uh, there are people outside. Uh, there is uh, beefed up security here. Uh, for what, we don't know. But uh, I'm, I'm supposing that uh, they're prepared for whatever may arise in the event of a verdict. So uh, everyone's in a state of nervous anticipation. Five, four, three, two, one. Hello. Come to us live as soon as we can get our picture. Uh, I'm told that uh, we have the courtroom verdict, so we will go live there. Have verdicts been reached on all counts as to all defendants who are mentioned in those counts? And have you brought with you the verdict forms for those counts? Okay, would you hand them to the bailiff, please? Title of court and cause. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Lawrence M. Powell, not guilty of the crime of assault by force likely to produce great bodily injury and with a deadly weapon, in violation of Penal Code Section 245A1, a felony, as charged in count one of the amended indictment. This 29th day of April, 1992, signed by the foreman. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Timothy E. Wind, not guilty of the crime of assault by force, likely to produce great bodily injury and with a deadly weapon. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Theodore J. Brasino, not guilty of the crime of assault by force, likely to produce great bodily injury and with a deadly weapon. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Stacy C. Kuhn, not guilty of the crime of assault by force likely to produce great bodily injury and with a deadly weapon. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, are these your verdicts? So say you one, so say you all. Yes. The jury in the Los Angeles police brutality trial has just reached its verdicts. The four police officers who were videotaped repeatedly beating an unarmed man were found not guilty on all but Verdict one count. Not one of the four police officers seen on videotape beating Mr. King a year ago he is guilty of using excessive force. They have all been found not guilty, guilty on all, all one charges. Count. Uh, and the and jurors were unable to reach this trial on one count Harris against Harris has been found was, uh, not guilty of all charges except for one of one count of excessive force against Lawrence Powell. Oh, not guilty of this trial. After a week of deliberations at the end of a long and closely watched trial. The jurors said racism didn't enter into the jury's deliberations. None of the jurors is black. There were 10 whites, one Asian, and one Hispanic. 
they, this jury, told the world that what we all saw with our own eyes wasn't a crime. Today, that jury asked us to accept the senseless and brutal beating of a helpless man. Today, that jury said that we should tolerate such conduct by those who are sworn to protect and serve. My friends, I'm here to tell this jury, no. No, our eyes did not deceive us. We saw what we saw, and what we saw was a crime. You got another white jury uh, saying that it's okay for white cops to beat up black people, and that's racist in American style, and it's been that way from the get. They're making it bad for all the good cops. If they're gonna let dirty cops off, how's that make a guy who's trying to do his job feel? You know? My little boy, is, he wanted to be a cop just like his father, but after seeing that tape, he doesn't want to be that anymore. Now I have to train him. For us to try to go back to tell black people in the community that justice is blind, they say, you're right, it is so blind that they can't see us. It is so blind to whenever something happens to one of us, we get the max if we don't get killed first. And so it is blind. Where's my justice? No justice. Letting, letting a person drive down in my streets with a belly full of yeah. beer. But you know that out there, there are a lot of people that are going to be very happy. How will you respond to them? What will be your reaction? Oh, I don't think I have to respond to them. They have to respond to themselves and make their own decision. They have all the facts in front of them, I would hope, and that's what they should base it on. It shouldn't be any sort of an emotional thing. I'm glad that you guys showed this to the world to let them see how black people are treated in this country. You know, you guys do not respect us. We, you, you feel we're sub-creatures. If I went and beat you, wait a minute, sweetheart. If I went and beat your dog the way they beat this man, I'd be in jail. These guys are going out, out to have a drink. Los Angeles uh, emerges from this verdict to the rest of the country, do you think? Why don't we say the rest of the world? President Bush stands up to challenge leaders of nations around the world uh, to uh, respect human rights and to not engage in a denial of those rights to citizens. They're going to laugh at him. They're going to point to this videotape and remember the name Rodney King. I'd like to see all the brothers in South Central LA get together, get out in the street, stop killing each other, and let's deal with what the real problem is. And who is the real problem? White people, white people. You got all the economic power, you selling the country to the Japanese. We've been here 437 years and don't get nothing. But I ask what? You know, the first look we get by the blacks, what are you doing in our community? That's what this is all about. A spig, I've had coke cans thrown at me. This is a prejudice valley. This is a travesty of justice. This is not going to end. They just started a war. They just declared a war. Just to go back to L.A. We don't want you over here. Which one it sends a bad message. It says it's okay to go ahead and beat somebody when they're down and kick the crap out of them. If it's not videotaped, don't worry about it. Another brother officer won't turn you in. And if a brother officer does turn you in, don't worry. We'll get white jurors or whoever it takes, and we'll, you'll walk. And you're protected by the system. You're backed up by the system. And the fact that it would happen here or happen anywhere is disgusting. It's a good time, folks. If you got a plane ticket, cash it in and get the heck out of Dodge. This is going to be a bad place to live. The next person going to be a white person. Then see, they're going to see what, uh, what happens then. <laughs>
Tonight, we must tell our children one more time, stay cool, be calm, that for African-American children and adults, freedom is not yet a reality in the United States.
people have suffered. Not only civil rights, but the right to be a human being. Don't fall victim to the division. You see us united from all a cross section of the community today. Because one of our brothers have been unjustly beaten and it has been justified by a jury that shows us that we can't get justice in America. How long do we have to see these things? How long before we come together in love for ourselves? How many more Bradley Kings does it have to be? How many more Natasha Harlins does it have to be? That's right, grab the him up. We're gonna fuck up white boys. That's right, let the Mexicans pass through. No Mexicans. No Mexicans. With the booty head and with the white boy. I'm going live in a second. Stand by, everybody. Keep a live picture, okay? of youths are on the streets in South Central Los Angeles. There are reports that they are throwing rocks and bottles. Let's get the latest on the situation now and go to Newscopter 13. Kim, you're looking at a live picture. There's been a mini riot at this location. Tom's liquor store has been looted at this point. shot now. Uh, this is uh, over the command center. That's at 54th and uh, Van Ness. You can see certainly there uh, the concentration of police vehicles. The fire department is aware of the situation at Florence and Normandy. They are holding back on their response. For the present time, we are not going to go in that area for anybody. We're working a number of radios aboard Newscopter 13. What we're doing is we have people aboard that are relaying information to the police helicopters and to the emergency operations center of the city. We're also showing a live picture that they're seeing. They know what's going on down here. Come on, 
clothes are torn. He's still bleeding all over the place. He's trying to get back into his truck. He is getting back into his truck. I hope he has enough power to, on his own to just get out of the area. I'm a news reporter. Oh, God! No! No, 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 no! Okay, okay, okay! Back him up! Demonstration or well, I think hell I think it started out as an organized demonstration and uh, and then it grew and grew and uh, now now it has been for the past hour or so pretty much a standoff here you better let it go now okay Mark Michael things have escalated dramatically in the last 15 minutes that is the third flag that you are looking at they have burned or you're looking at one of the Parker Center guard stations. One of the guard stations, they have taken it over, they are breaking the windows. We are asking people to stay out of this area. Police officers trying to seal off the street. Uh, the group basically just marching right down the middle of the street. 
it, it is a multiracial crowd. It is not uh, predominantly any color. There's a fellow who's lighting the trees, yes. is he not? Yes, Absolutely. that's what Yeah, going along block to block. And uh, nobody's stopping. I mean, one tree after another. These bearded palms uh, with the, the dead fronds hanging down, uh, great fuel for an arsonist. Is that you? Do you want to change that to how widespread is, is the violence? Because it'll be hard to talk about. Okay. Well, at this evening, we understand that there are about 20 fires burning, mostly in South Central Los Angeles. This is a predominantly black area of the city. This is a super swap meet location. Someone, actually a group of over 100 people, went into this location and looted it. And every time they go in and loot, after they, they're done looting, they set fire to the structure. Sorry, what's going on in the black unit? They shot Latasha for Harding. They took out my boy Rodney King, beat him on the street. What you need, you want the video tape. We're going to take out everyone that's going to take yourself first. Go. We're hearing for the first time tonight from Daryl Gates, who is holding a news conference. Let's go to him live. Once again, I think uh, most of it's concentrated in South Central Los Angeles area. But the uh, problem is you find many locations where there are no officers, and uh, that needs to be corrected, and we're trying to do that as strictly as we can. dispatching LAPD units uh, along with all fire trucks that respond to major emergency blazes for protection. But uh, with respect to trying to get LAPD service or anything else, folks, you're on your own down there. Fires burning, there are people being beaten, there is looting. It is a dangerous night in the city of Los Angeles. I'm advised that. Uh, there is someone from the Secretary of State's office on the way over to accept this proclamation of a state emergency, of a state of emergency for Los Angeles City and Los Angeles County. 
This is uh, in response to a request by Mayor Bradley. As a result of the discussions that we have had, there will be as many as 750 California Highway Patrolmen. And additionally, we have made available some 2,000 National Guardsmen. They are on standby, prepared to uh, move. Transport has been arranged. And it is our purpose here at the state government level to restore law and order and to minimize the danger to the residents of the area. This is a matter that needs to be settled in the courts and not in the streets. Thank you. officials are scrambling at this very moment uh, to produce a statement from President Bush. Nobody expected that verdict the way it came down. There's nothing really that the White House can do about that verdict, but it does present a huge political problem. Many civil rights leaders thought that President Bush has been weak on civil rights, civil rights promises. Have you had any discussions with President Bush either on the telephone or has there been any... President Bush does not talk to us. Uh, let's, 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 let's be straight about this. Uh, we have no access to the White House. We had one meeting since I have been in Congress with the President. It was performa, it was courtesy, but there is no relationship. Is that who we thought? I think so, yeah. Administration officials say that the Justice Department had, in fact, launched a civil rights investigation into the Rodney King beating, but once state charges were brought, they sort of put that on hold. Now, it's unclear at this moment exactly where that investigation stands. Faith? It would almost seem at this point, Jim, that they'd have to pick it up again. You cannot ignore that all of this is coming in a presidential election year. You know that I don't think he's done enough, that I, that I think we have had too much division and too little harmony. I think there's been too little effort to bring people together across racial lines. This is a human problem. People in this country don't trust each other and don't trust the system. And the political system has too often divided people by race. And that is the urgent task for America today. Our diversity will either be our undoing or the source of our greatest strength. I am angry and I have a right to that anger. And the people out there have a right to that anger. We don't want anybody killed. None of us believe in violence. But there are some angry people in America and young black males in my district are feeling at this moment, if they could not get a conviction with the Rodney King video available to the jurors, that there can be no justice in America. One zero two three KJLA here in Los Angeles, and uh, we're discussing all the violence and the aftermath and the directions to go as far as this incident here. Vent your anger, your frustration, your, your your hard feelings. Not out in the streets, not breaking windows, not looting, not rioting, but you know, it, it, I guess as some people say, just punch on me, punch on the radio station, talk to us over the lines. Let let's go back to the phone feel, lines yeah. and let's Do see it? how you feel this morning. Yeah, I'm I'm very frustrated, you know, because uh, I I don't have no neighborhood no more. This is not the way for us to vent our frustration. This is what they expect us to do. I've been listening to KJLH all my life. I only have three words for uh, what's happening, and those are the same three words that was uttered during the 1965 riot. And you're going to say those bad words, huh? Third and baby burn. Yeah. Thank you, Robert. I saw it on TV. We come down here, and it's just blazing. And this is your aunt's store? Yes. And was it a liquor store here? Or no, this was a 99 cent store. Uh huh. And she has another store on Crenshaw. And that one is gone. It's terrible. Absolutely terrible. But what can you say? They said it all yesterday. And this is the outcome of it. And this is the outcome of this. 
여러분께서는 1580AM으로 방송되고 있는 저 라디오 코리아의 특별 뉴스 듣고 계십니다. 방금 들은 또 소식 하나 전해드리죠. KFWB 980AM 뉴스 라디오는 이번 폭동으로 인해서 한인들의 피해가 가장 심각하다고 보도했습니다. 이 방송은 최근 한일 관계 때문에 특히 한인들의 피해가 큰것 같다고 밝히고 I don't bring any other people, any other race, any other colors. Just, just it happened. It happened. That's it. We gonna believe again. We gonna good intention. Do we? You wanna keep the, our good intention continues. And uh, I say we we live here, and we we will live here, and. Uh... No, I understand. I understand. The city is still officially under a state of emergency. The city council is going to meet to discuss how to proceed from here. The purpose of this meeting is to discuss the necessary action relative to the state of emergency in the city of Los Angeles, declared by the mayor on April 29th. Okay, uh, Mr. Holden. Uh, Mr. President, members, I'm sure you've heard from each of my colleagues before I arrive, and certainly you've seen them on TV. Asking for calm and regretting the tragedy that took place last night and continuing in our city. The question is, uh, how do we stop it? If we have a pretty good idea that's likely to occur, and it will, unless we have a presence. But you got to start deploying right now, I tell you. Handwriting's on the wall. I can't really tell because we're on the radio yeah. and I can barely see the television. Are people still looting at this time, Carl? Yes, they are. I seen them when I was coming into work. They're still going into stores and they're <sighs> still you. taking things. Incredible. And laughing. Man, gang stuff, man. Gang stuff. You go in there and find your side, man. Gang stuff. While the, the looting seems to continue unabated, uh, the mood, at least, uh, seems to be uh, very calm today. We can write through that. It says factory direct sale. This is the biggest sale they've probably ever seen. It's like people are looting anything they can get their hands on. Here's a guy with a plant, even, coming right out the front window and taking off. I've been taking pictures of it all. This is exciting. It's wrong, but it's exciting. But you know something? It's kind of orderly. It's kind of orderly in a way. I'm telling you, it's, it's amazing. Let me get this shot here. It's amazing. Where are the police? Where are all the police that Chief Gates said would be ready for this? Uh, Chief Gates? Uh, yes, just to uh, oops. Uh, emphasize uh, our deployment uh, will increase substantially, and uh, we hope that that uh, will uh, satisfy the need. Now, now there are some police. Now everyone's running. Here, the, here are the police who are coming. Look at that. There must be two or three dozen people. They're still coming out of that store right now. I don't know how many people fit in that store, but they're all running out because there's the police finally moving in. The police can't arrest this many people. They just go running with their merchandise, and the police really aren't running after them. They can't run after them. We just don't have enough people to do it. As soon as we chase them away, they come right back. It's my judgment that the overwhelming majority of those who are engaged in that unlawful activity now are not the law-abiding citizens of this community, but those who are taking advantage of an opportunity. What are you doing? I don't know. Are you embarrassed? Don't you know this is illegal? Why did you do this? I don't know, because it's free. And it's free? Yeah. Don't you know it's wrong? Nah. You don't care? I don't care. Where are the National Guard troops that have been promised? Why do we not see them? Bill, why hasn't the National Guard been called out? That's a mystery, Dan. We have uh, had reports that several hundred are in the area and we expect to see and hear from them soon. I understand the uh, idea that uh, they could make things worse, but then you could say that about the police, too. I mean, how much worse does it need to get? Oh, 
好吃。이런 불행한 일이 생긴 게 하나님의 이게 엄중한 꾸중이 아닌가 하는 생각도 듭니다. 이걸로 끝나는 게 아니라 경찰의 말에 의하면 은 네. 이번 주말이 또 문제라고 그러거든요. 네. 그 과연 이걸 어떻게 지켜야 되는 건지 참... 아주머니가 하시는 거기 다시 한번 말씀해 주시겠습니까? 여기 그러니까 팔십팔가 하고요. 네. 어 벌문이거든요. 북구수원이시요. 거기서 옷가게를 하십니까? 네, 옷가게 하세요. 거기 거기 탔어요? 네, 거기가 지금 북하고 있어요. 어머, 그거 어떻게 이게 아니 소방차가 갈 수가 없나요? 현재까지는 소방차가 전혀 보이지 않고 있습니다. 연락을 해도 지금 상황에서는요. 다른 지역을 또 커버하고 있는지. 근데 우리는 거기다 목매 달고 있는데 우리 어떻게 하면 좋아요? We have a fire that's broken out in Koreatown here across Western Avenue. Have there been any kinds of disturbances in Koreatown? I think this is the first we've heard about this kind of activity. Yes, that's right, Pat. This has just erupted. I don't see any official firefighters, any engines. Are there any in the area? No, no firefighters here. 그 주인들이 그 문을 닫고 피하신 곳은 많이 그 피해를 당하셨고 주인분들이 나오셔가지고 그 일에 대비해서 준비하신 분들 비즈니스 보면 거의 다 필도 안 당하셨어요. 여러분들이 여러분들 본인 또 본인들이 하신 사업 그런 거를 보호할 권리가 물론 있습니다. 네. 꼭 필요하다 하면은 무장할 필요도 있겠죠. 그걸 그런 권리를 인정하는 법이 있는 나라인데. 이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이
are getting reports of looting from all over Los Angeles and also surrounding areas. It's not confined to South Central, not confined to the city of Los Angeles. It's uh, all over. Vernon Convalescent Hospital, a fire over there. Somebody said a fire in the Convalescent Hospital. Was... The fire department, the police department, and everybody else is trying to help scatter it all over the city. So the fires are burning out of control. dead at this time, at least 572 injured, including two firefighters. This number is staggering. I don't know exactly how to tell you this, but 916 structure fires are burning in the Los Angeles area, 916. Culver City on the right. People are going crazy down there. It's like they're feeling so oppressed. And then they're going to go and burn everything down. They're going to be more oppressed. Well, there's shit going on with people other than, you know, a, a black thing. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. I mean, you got some people that work 60 to 80 hours a week and still have bill collectors calling. And they see their bosses peel out in these mercs and these roses every day. And, stroke him on the back and tell him it's going to be all right. You know, how long can that last? It's not right! Oh, I work too hard for this! I don't even understand nothing. Come on. It's not right! It's not right! It's not right what y'all doing! I came from the ghetto, too! Same as all of you did! Y'all need to listen, but you know, yo! Yo, we gotta stop my bitch, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You call it black power. Yeah. Uh, you mad at the white man. Why he destroy my bitch? Why he destroy my truck? Black man, Why steal my computer? I'm trying to make it. Could you understand that? Can y'all see it? I'm trying to make it. This is not fair! This is not fair! This is 
California Army National Guard has been deployed to assist the Sheriff's Department and Los Angeles Police Department in a mutual aid operation to restore law and order and to protect life and property in Los Angeles County. Dan, I don't think there was reluctance. I think that there uh, was some delay for logistical reasons, reasons that have to do with equipping the guard. What about the logistical problems in equipping the guard? The chief problem has been with respect to uh, ammunition. If the guard is Can you finish that? What's the problem with ammunition? Uh, the troops came, but the ammunition didn't. They came with some ammunition, not the full complement that they should have. The problem was that it was slow in coming from Camp Roberts. We're gonna start out from where we are right now. We're gonna head to uh, 81's position, head to Kilo's position, then weapons company position. And we're gonna come Side up over. like that. Yes, sir. Saddle up! I didn't expect to uh, be on U.S. soil doing this job ever, ever. Tell everyone down there, get in the corner or something. Are we locking low? Locking low around the chamber. Never thought it would be done. Not in our own country. It's, it's amazing. You've got to know who, who you're looking at and uh, who you're thinking about. Whereas in the Gulf, it was a lot easier. You knew. Hey, take a corner. You stay down. You see it. If you take rounds, take it up. Go home. Get back home. Go. Get off the streets. Leave the area. Get off the streets. Leave the area. These are the police, LAPD, going up and down Pico, telling residents the curfew is in effect. Now get off the streets. Get off the streets or you'll be subject to arrest. Leave the area. Avenue and West 54th Street Command Center. Due to the escalation of 
This is Ram 1 over. Ram 3 up. Yeah. They're going to turn on the sprinklers out here. Okay? So it'll keep it wet down. So be careful so you guys don't get wet up. All right. right. What's but, that going to uh, do for water pressure if they need it over here on these uh, houses? We'll turn it off. But I, I don't think it's going to make that big a difference. What I'm trying to do is avoid the sparks. Not again like that, though. I'm so People got injured because of the looting. And there were police across the street watching it. There was nothing they could do. It was already out of hand. There were too many people just going crazy, stepping all over each other. I know one thing. Hungry as I am now, <laughs> it still ain't. Well, I think that's going to end. People are going to get hungry. They were going to look around and say, where do we go now? I guess that's why we're here, huh? Yeah, that's why we're here. The world watching us, though, we know that. The newspapers from other big cities are reporting their reaction to the British mail that rather scathing from the sages about it. They said that racism in the United States of America is as American as apple pie. Los Angeles Mayor Tom Bradley and police officials said today that they're regaining control over the city. Police Chief Daryl Gates admitted that the police force got a slow start Wednesday afternoon when the violence began. And Gates and Fire Chief Donald Manning conceded that the city's forces were overwhelmed. Firefighters donned bulletproof vests as they fought the scores of new fires that were set last night. There were still about 40 fires burning early this morning. At least 35 people are now said to have lost their lives. More than 1,300 people have been injured and 3,000 arrested. The city remains under a dusk to dawn curfew with many stores and malls closed.
Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Ross Becker here in the Channel 13 newsroom. We are interrupting programming this afternoon. Momentarily, we expect to hear a statement from someone whose name uh, will be indelibly connected to all of the violence we have seen over the last couple of days in Los Angeles, and that is Rodney King. And we're standing by. There's been great anticipation. Uh, certainly, uh, Mr. King uh, has not made uh, public statements. Uh, he has been uh, really the uh, the invisible man in all this. And uh, I, I detect some movement through the crowd. Yep, I see. Here he comes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you all for coming. Rodney King has this to say to all the people of Los Angeles and all the people of the cities of the United States so caught up in this horror and hate. The killing, the burning, the looting, the chaos must stop now. The time for healing is upon us. Rodney King has prepared a very brief statement. <coughs> Mr. Rodney. Uh, people, I, um, I just, I just want to say, you know, can we, can we all get along? Can we, can we get along? Um, can we stop making it, making it horrible for, for the. Whole, for the older people and the, and, the, and the and the kids, and I mean we've got enough smog here in Los Angeles. Um, <laughs> let alone to uh, d deal with the uh, setting these fires and and things. It's, it's, it's just not right. It's not right, and um, it's not it's not gonna it's not gonna change anything. We've got to, we've got to quit. We've got to quit. You know, after all, I mean, I can understand the the, the first upset for the first two hours after the verdict, but uh, to go on, to keep going on like, like this, and to see the security guard shot on the on the ground, it um, it's it's uh, it's just not right. It's just not right because those people are, are, will never go home. To, to their families again, and uh, I mean, please, we can we can get along here. We we all can get along. We just gotta just gotta, you know. I mean, we're all stuck here for a while. Let's you know, let's 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 try to work it out. Let's try to beat it. You know, let's try and work it out. Thank you, Steve. If you ask Thank Rodney, you. you ask Rodney. No, no, no question. question. No okay. question. Thank you very much. So Steve, Steve and I will be available if you have any questions. Tonight, I want to talk to you about violence in our cities and justice for our citizens. What we saw last night and the night before in Los Angeles is not about civil rights. It's not a message of protest. It's been the brutality of a mob, pure and simple. And let me assure you, I will use whatever force is necessary to restore order. Within one hour of the verdict, I directed the Justice Department to move into high gear on its own independent criminal investigation into the case, 
you must understand that our system of justice provides for the peaceful, orderly means of addressing this frustration. We must respect the process of law, whether or not we agree with the outcome. In a civilized society, there can be no excuse, no excuse, for the murder, arson, theft, and vandalism that have terrorized the law-abiding citizens of Los Angeles. None of this is what we wish to think of as American. It's as if we were looking in a mirror that distorted our better selves and turned us ugly. We cannot let that happen. We cannot do that to ourselves. If we are to remain the most vibrant and hopeful nation on Earth, we must allow our diversity to bring us together, not drive us apart. The violence will end. Justice will be served. Hope will return. Thank you, and may God bless the United States of America. President George Bush and his address to the nation from the Oval Office. Time for your reactions once again from around the country. Fort Washington, Maryland, you're on the air. First of all, Mr. Bush spoke of the last 48 hours as if it's the first time he's noticed that America has a problem. Uh, it's always had a problem from its inception, from 1776 when they said uh, all men were created equal and we had slavery. It was striking to me that there was no direct statement to the African-American population and there was completely missing any sense of a reality about how a national leader might move people towards reconciliation. People have to see that they're going to have to make their voices heard. If they allow, when they hear a politician, to try to explain this away as being thugs and murderers, things will not change. This is going to be a people movement. Uh, people can move politicians. The community leads. They don't follow. Politicians follow. They don't lead. And that's what we have to remember. Vamos a enseñarle que aquí el latino de veras quiere apoyar esta ciudad. Necesitamos que traigan nomás escobas y sus guantes y los niños y toda la familia para comenzar a limpiar toda la, la ciudad. You know, it's important to see the full scope, the burning, the looting, and the cleaning up. A personal opinion is just that, you know, everybody needs to work together. And if this could just continue, it would be wonderful. But, you know, I don't think it will. I think, you know, a few people say, okay, I put in my time, I help clean, and they're not going to do anything. You know, prove me wrong, you know, oh, God, prove me wrong, you know. I was driving down Western below Wilshire and I looked to the left and saw a sea of people. These are Korean Americans who gathered today to call for peace. This is our city and we must stop destroying our own homes. To stand united to stop and further senseless violence and destruction. Most of them are wearing white headbands. They say that is a symbol of peace. The one sign that stood out in my mind the most was a sign that said, we know it was injustice. We know it was injustice. We stand together with all those who want justice in the King case. We must stop police abuse wherever it occurs. What do you want? What do you want? The only power I believe that power, poor people have and powerless people have in this country comes from our unruly behavior, our, 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 our resistance to an order that would place us at the bottom of the totem pole.
This is where it began. This is where the fuse was lighted. It began with the arrest by white officers of the California Highway Patrol of two young Negroes, one on a charge of drunk driving. There was an argument. There was a scuffle. And the story of police brutality quickly spread through the community. Up the street, a block or so in that direction, a church where Negro leaders pleaded for peace and were rejected. Down that way, the busy intersection where cars were overturned and burned, where other cars were stoned, where a television technician was pulled from his wagon and almost beaten to death. What has changed? The only thing that was done was that massive forces were brought in to suppress the actual overt action. The incident is not an isolated incident. The difference this time is that we have the proof. In a civilized society, there can be no excuse for the murder, pillage, looting, and arson have nothing to do with civil rights. Get out of the car, nigger. Assume the position, nigger. Sit on the curb, nigger. Right face down on the ground, nigger. Why should not we get rested? I don't think it ever stopped, really. I mean, it may not be like this, but it will never stop. This is not bad! 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 A crisis in our country, says the McCone Commission, so serious and explosive is the situation that unless it is checked, the August riots may be only a curtain raiser to what could blow up one day in the future. What shall it avail our nation if we can place a man on the moon but cannot cure the sickness in our cities? This is Bill Stout for CBS Reports in Los Angeles. Good night. <laughs>